Hello everyone, welcome to my video lecture in BK Mat YouTube channel. Today I came up with the proportional logic. We speak with the language of mathematics today. Language of mathematics. You know, uh, you can't get verified in logic without learning something about uh, proportional logic. In this video, I'm gonna say something about what uh, proportional logic is, why the concept of proportional logic is important. Uh, sometimes uh, it, we can say sensational logic, sensational logic. It's just interested in how the truth value of compound claims uh, depends on the truth value of individual claims that's mixed up. For simplicity throughout our discussion, the language of proportional logic consists of a set of primitive symbols, the so-called syntactical variables. We, we just want to be present with the syntaxes the proportional statement is going to be represented with syntax and logical operators, the so-called proportional connectivist again the proportional connectivist again we have also auxiliary symbols thus are contained in the language of proportional logic but we start our journey with the definition of uh, proposition definition of proposition okay what proposition we mean here in mathematics beyond the english definition all right uh in uh, we have seen, I think you have seen in any uh, level in your English class, maybe we have alternate sentences, propositions, depending on the level of uh, uh, abstract. But here we focus on what proposition is and can be associated with the mathematical aspect and here precisely proposition is a declarative sentence that has true value a declarative sentence that has true value that means it has either true or false not both that means every proposition is either true or false no such true value True value in a sense, the either true or false we mean. So every proposition must have some truth value. No proposition can be true and false women. For instance, we have milk is white. Clearly, as I told you before in the introduction, we just want to be represented with this syntax for the proposition P, Q, R, with the variables here. Letters not variables actually you cannot be confused with the mathematics what variable is we mean But here clearly with the letters P Q R milk is white root 2 is a rational number R is 2 plus 3 is 4 This statement I mean proposition is just Represented with this letter. So those are propositions that mean they have a truth value either true or false women. Let's say if you consider milk is wise, everybody know milk is wise so that it has a true truth value. Root 2 is a rational number, which is false. 2 plus 2 is 4. Then it is true. <coughs> that means it has a truth value. Whereas when you come to the sit down, what are you doing? Come on, hello, close the door and slide. Those are not propositions. Generally, imperatives or commands are not propositions. So no proposition can be true and false at the same time. 
universally it is true or false name? Let's say if it's true that 2 plus 2 is 4, it cannot be false. It cannot be false. Then 2 plus 2 is 4. Okay? If 2 plus 2 is 4, it is true. Then 2 plus 2 is 4. It cannot be false for somebody else with me. Because sometimes we might get troubling that we have common mistake that someone may think that a composition can be true for one person and false for another. That's wrong. It must be false for everyone if it's false. Or true if it's true for everyone. It must be universal truth value that it has with me. Okay? <clears throat> when we're gonna close with the cream of our discussion with the compound proposition, it's just a combination of two or more propositions using connectives. Okay? Using connectives, uh, we can formulate a compound proposition of two or more propositions with logical connective. Uh, which is very interesting. You will see what logical connective is with me. Uh, so that we can formulate the compound proposition with the help of this connective, the so-called logical connective. <coughs> but we're gonna focus on the basic logical operators or logical connectives. We have various logical connectives, but we focus solely on the logical, I mean the basic logical connectives here. Uh, let's say one of them is negation. This is the, the logical connective. Just symbolize it with this. Again, you can read by as not. Negation of P is true if P is false and negation of P is false if P is true with me <coughs> sorry and logic you know negation is also called the logical complement logical complement it's just an operation that takes a proposition to another if it was p then it just turned it to negation of p another proposition so it's just a unary or single argument logical connective we call we have uh, p true false uh, if, if, if it's true then just false is negation if it's false then it's negation is true we mean uh, basically the negation or not have uh, uh, I mean negation and or have precise meaning and are often written as symbols like we did this we just represent the symbols instead of words we will use uh, the symbols to construct more complicated statements from one that we have okay let's say if you have p then we formulate using this symbol another proposition uh, to create the truth verb i will give you a sort of statement sort of statements must be given uh, but you have to be know that for two statement or propositions you need to know we have four options like we did here two prop one proposition then two two proposition four option uh, again three proposition eight option is we just want to be constructing the truth table like generally to the power of n possibility we have so if uh, p is true negation p is false if p is false negation p is true with me when we move to the other connective conjunction clearly represented with this symbol then you can read as and refer the statement uh, this proposition P and Q, you can read P and Q is true whenever both P and Q simultaneously are true, otherwise false. If both P and Q are simultaneously true, then 
the given statement or the given proposition, combine it, the given produced proposition, co combine it through this connector is true, otherwise false we mean. As you just look at on uh, <coughs> the given cable, you have uh, two true, two false, one true, one false, one true, one false. So that's how you should reshuffle during the construction of truth table. Uh, because we have some two propositions here, four options are needed. We have four options, four possibility, what we construct. So the statement indicates that P and Q, the proposition here is true whenever both P and Q is true. So we have only P true, true, then this is true. Other thing is false, because one of them is false at least, minimum. But here, false, false, then it must be false here. Combined through the addition or conjunction we mean but uh, <coughs> we come to the disjunction again with the same fashion disjunction the v-shape symbol symbolized with the v-shape uh, so this is uh, you can read as or the statement p or q is false when both p and q are false otherwise true women otherwise true women <coughs> with the same fashion you can also construct here we have two true two false one true one false one true one false just arrange it uh, because we have four options i mean two pro pro uh, propositions it means uh, we must have four uh, possibility like you observe in the table so that the given proposition is false when uh, both P and Q are false, otherwise true. So if this is true, false, false, then that must be false. Otherwise, the remaining, thing, the remaining scenario is true, we mean intuitively. The use of R uh, should not be confused. And this proportional logic is something different from uh, uh, it's normal using English language, okay? It's just a bit different from the English language or we mean we uh, most of the time the, the word you see in English language. Uh, for instance, uh, if you take if uh, someone let say if a person says I will go to uh, cinema in the afternoon or I'll go to coffee house in the afternoon. Okay? Here or you use it in the exclusive se exclusive sense. Okay? It says that mean he will do one thing or another, not both. Okay? It mean he will go to the cinema in the afternoon or will go to the coffee house in the afternoon. That mean he will do one thing, he will do one thing or another. He may go to the coffee house or he may go to the cinema, to the cinema, but not both. Here all is used in the exclusive sense. But in propositional logic, all is used in the inclusive sense. That's, it allows by the possibility of doing something that without him being in consistence. That means. So it's just pretty easy, or in the sense of uh, logical, I mean, propositional logic women. So the propositional P uh, or Q is false when both P and Q are false, otherwise true women. Now let's move to the conditional implies. Conditional implies. We will now discuss that uh, it means for sorry for conditional for position. 
So to reply another statement, the symbol we use for this is uh, here. Yes, you can read as implies. Uh, so you can read as P implies Q. So this statement is false when P is true and Q is false, otherwise true. Okay, so we have P, Q, P implies Q, true, true is true, true implies false is false. False implies true is true, false implies false is true. The only option we have is if Q is false, P is true, then the given uh, conditional is uh, P implies Q is true, we mean. Obviously, this statement is equivalent to the negation of P or Q. Logically equivalent, we mean they have the same truth value. They have the same truth value. So, in here, uh, to understand the mathematical implication, because here the conditional implica the implication is false when Q is false and P is true. So true implies false is false. Otherwise, in other scenario, the given uh, uh, condition is true. In a, I mean true in essence. Now to understand the mathematical implication, let's consider this uh, statement. Maybe if your mother say something, just promise it to you. If uh, I go to the supermarket, I will buy you a candy. It says, okay, this statement. So this is conditional. When has she told the truth? When has, when has she told the truth? Okay, that is the fundamental question to be raised here well <coughs> there is uh, really one way she has lied if she goes to the supermarket and doesn't buy you if she goes to the supermarket and doesn't buy you uh, that's she has lied okay if she doesn't go to the to the supermarket it doesn't really matter what happens later since her promise was conditional on her going to the candy store. So if she doesn't go, she lied to women. If she doesn't, I mean, if she go and she doesn't buy a candy, then she lied. Okay? That's why only if this is, if you can represent this statement, the second statement as Q, this is P. If this is false, if she doesn't buy women, false. If this is to go to the supermarket, she goes to the supermarket, that's true. True implies false is false. We have only one option. Okay? Uh, basically, <coughs> the, in, uh, sorry, we make it very, P implies Q, we have different, you can read as P implies Q, P is the, sufficient of q or q is necessary for p women so in line with that we have uh, other forms giving a conditional statement p implies q the converse we mean q implies p if p implies q is a given conditional statement its converse mean q implies p is inverse mean negation of P implies negation of Q. If contrapositive, the contrapositive is the negation of Q implies negation of P. That is the negation of converse we mean. The contrapositive is negation of converse. Okay? Now let's develop the idea with the instance. Let's say if uh, I'm hungry, then I will eat pizza. Okay? Uh, we can have uh, outlet at uh, the converse inverse contrapositive. So if P then Q, okay. So the converse mean the converse in a sense from the previous Q implies P, okay. Q implies P. So if I eat pizza, then I am hungry. The inverse is if I am not hungry, then I will not be that as making negation with that. 
this is the form of verbs whereas here making negation to the conditional proportional condition is just inverse again the contrapositive mean the negation of this converse mean if you don't eat pizza then i'm not hungry you may okay now we move to the by conditional by conditional Because in the previous, when P implies Q, well then sometimes you can use, uh, yeah, previous, go back. P implies Q here. We consider the proposition P is called uh, the hypothesis or the antecedent of the conditional proposition. Let's say if you consider the conditional proposition here, well, Q is called the conclusion or the consequent way. Okay. Now, when you come to the by conditional, this is the symbol. For simplicity, we use the symbol like we did it for the others. You can read the if and don't leave. The statement is this con proposition condition is true when both p and q are true or both false we so we have an option that if both true if both false then the given statement or the given proposition is true otherwise false we mean we have a false statement <coughs> okay so i think it's pretty easy to understand what how we are going to construct just two true to false again one to one false one to one false so this uh, proposition is just gonna be true if both p and q are true both are false we mean other the main is false here like we did okay so very simple in making our verifying something to show the given proposition is uh, true or false that's just uh, straightforward now when we move to the tautology tautology and contradictions okay tautology and contradiction tautology is a statement that is uh, always true that's always true we mean here p if p is true then its negation is false if this is false its negation is true so p or negation this negation i mean all negation is p mean true true or false is true false or true is true with all okay this uh, with all this is uh, only an option to be false if both are false women that's why this constructing table is uh, uh, true uh, so when we're talking about totality that can not, never be false women okay it can never be false under some circumstance it cannot be false that is uh, in mathematics the totally g it's just a statement it's just a statement that's always true regardless of the circumstance okay we don't care about the circumstance here for instance uh, that dog is or that cow is a mama that statement is always true it doesn't matter which cow in front you okay so that Without any circumstance, the given statement is uh, true women. Here, we can construct the uh, truth table of this. Show that P or negation of P and Q is totally G. We have P and Q. Let us here, I mean, we have a sort of two propositions, we mean P and Q. So, it needs... Uh, eight i mean four possibilities here if you have two propositions then four options are needed 
two true, two false, we have one true, one false, one true, one false, then true and true is true because we have P and P and Q, then we have negation P, Q. So four, I mean five chromins are needed to during construction of our table. So true and true is true, true and false is false. Only we have false if both are false, like we did before in uh, conjunction. Again, it's negation of this common mean false, then others are true, we mean. So let's look at on P, this column or this, okay? Combine it through the disjunction or. So true or false is true, true or true is true, false or true is true, false or true is true. The only option in disjunction is false is if both P and Q, if the two proposition is I mean, two propositions are false when when it comes to the contradiction. We can download this. It's just uh, a statement is always false. Me, always false. Contradiction in essence. If the statement is always false, uh, we have P. Negation P true, false, false true. So with end true and false is false, false and true is false. So it's just a negation of the tautology. Let's say in the previous instance, the cow is a repeater. Repeater. So it's just always false. Okay? So in mathematics, a contradiction is just uh, uh, the assertion of a statement and its negation. Or equivalent, it can never be true. That's the negation of tautology. I mean, tautology. Now, show that the negation of P or Q is logically equivalent to the negation of P and negation of Q. So here, negation of P or Q, P, Q, we have a, because we have two propositions only. That means four options two true two false again one true one false one true one false just reshuffle with this step during the construction negation of q you see false true this false negation of p this is false 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 then true then plus false then it can be true the same thing the same fashion you can do here so p or q is true or true is true true or False is true, false or true is true, false or false is false. As against negation, I mean this is the negation of true, false, 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 then here is true. Now we we get this column, we need to compare with the, this form, that the negation of P and the negation of Q. False and false is false, false and true is false, true and false is false, true and true is true on one option. So we compare that the two columns, do they have the same uh, truth volume in each corresponding terms? I mean, we have to be compared that it should be identical. This should not be true. Otherwise, uh, it's not logically equivalent. This is logically equivalent. Every corresponding truth value must be the same. So we have false, 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 true, true, true. We mean, so, in contradiction, it's just uh, equivalent to the negation of the total jewelry. Okay, so we have uh, finished the lecture in today. Hopefully, you have uh, spent a very cheerful hour in my video lecture. So, the more you see my videos in the this channel in BK Math YouTube channel, the more enjoyable mathematics will be. So to do this, uh, you should not forget to subscribe subscribe the channel in my BK Math YouTube channel. Women you should not be forget so that next time I will release um, videos relating with uh, mathematics. Okay, so bye. 
Thank you. Next time I will uh, come up with the quantifiers and sectory. We we'll discuss one concept of status and the operations again. Thank you very much.